our technical team is ready to roll, our team of one, then we're, then we're good. Okay, thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. My name is Gerald Kramer. I'm here to talk to you tonight about Google Reader and how you can do more with less. So the agenda for this evening is a few simple points. What is RSS? Who uses RSS? Why a Google Reader might help you, where you can find RSS feeds that Google Reader needs to be productive for you. We'll do a quick little demonstration after I tell you a little bit about Google Reader, and then we'll have time for questions at the end. So what is RSS? Who here knows what RSS is or has heard what RSS is? Anybody? Just you? Okay. And you have Eric? Perfect. This is going to be a great presentation. Then. Okay, so RSS, real quickly, it's just an acronym that stands for Real Simple Syndication. It's just a method for websites, blogs, online forums to push information out to users. Because traditionally in the past, the web has really been a pull environment almost. You have to go out and you have to find the content. You don't have the content coming to you. There isn't one simple place where you can go and have a multitude of information sources all combined into one view for you. So it's really a way for everybody to keep up with their favorite websites in one simple interface. They just have to log into one web page. They have access to all these feeds and they can be stay up to date on any kind of topics that they're interested in. So who uses RSS? Uh, some surprising stats. As I was researching this presentation, I was trying to find some numbers and it's really hard to get a feel out there how many people actually use RSS. From the looks of this classroom, these stats are pretty accurate as we only have about one or two percent lift up their hands. So. 11% of blog readers, which is where this has really taken off. Uh, blogs, you know, people post to daily, weekly, maybe bi-weekly, and they try to get information out to their readers. So there was really no means before this came up to get that information out to the user, similar to what people might use for email newsletters, uh, instead of having them come to the website and log on every day. So the question to you guys is if you read newspapers online, you know, if you read blogs, you've got a few that you look at, if you're in online forums and you maybe post to something and you want to know when somebody replies right away, RSS can be for you. It can really help simplify your life and eliminate, not totally eliminate, but reduce the number of websites that you need to visit every day. So why it'll help you? Conceptually, all it is is one, one portal, really. And you can subscribe to feeds. So an RSS feed takes a new post on the blog, and if you subscribe to that feed, it'll show up in your Google Reader. So you just log into Google Reader every day, and if there's been any new posts on a blog, or if there's been any new articles in the newspaper, if there's been any new responses to an online forum, they're all there for you. They're organized by date and time. You can quickly go through them. If the title doesn't catch your attention, you don't really have to read the rest. You can just go on to the next post. So it saves you going around to multiple websites, wasting a lot of time trying to remember or go into your bookmarks and then clicking on the links. It's all right there for you, really simple, really fast. Less browsing, more content, less time. That's sort of the catchphrase for it. So where are you finding these RSS feeds? If we don't know what they are, how are we going to know what to look for? You'll notice I've got an icon up in the top right. If you see that, that means that that site or that blog has burned the feed. So it has an RSS feed available that you can subscribe to with any one of the readers out there, Google Reader being one of them. So if you see that, or if you see RSS, so this, this example is from the Globe and Mail. And if you had, the Globe isn't really that good. It's a good newspaper to read online. They do a great job organizing it, but it was really difficult trying to find where I can subscribe to the RSS feed on here. I had to go all the way to the bottom, and this is at the very, very, very bottom of the main page and you just see this little RSS sign. So you click on there and then it takes you to another page and you can subscribe just to the business section, to sports updates, to real estate, to lifestyles, anything, any of the sections that are in that newspaper, say you only read entertainment and sports. Well, you can subscribe to the Globe RSS feed for those two sections and every day instead of having to go to the Globe and click on multiple pages, you log into Google Reader, you read the highlights, and you're up to speed. Toronto Star actually does a better job at the top. They've got RSS, so you don't have to go all the way to the bottom to see it, little RSS symbol. But also beside each one of the sections, they've just done a big redesign on their web page. They have this RSS button, so it's more prominent. It's easier for you to find. You don't have to go to an extra page in order to subscribe to a section of the Toronto Star. So they're starting to get caught up and, and starting to advance their website to make it easier for users to get content out of there. The top is a blog that I read. Uh, as you can tell, 
This guy really wants you to subscribe. He's got tons of ways for you to subscribe. Big subscribe to John Chow. You can't miss it at the top. He's got a few more where you can subscribe to different posts. You can subscribe to comments on the post. So if you're interested in seeing what a blog post is, you can get all of his posts. But if you're really interested in the interaction where the users log on and they comment on his posts and they comment on each other's ideas on the post, you can actually subscribe to those comments as well and be kept up to date on the dialogue that any reader of that blog has. So what is Google Reader? It's just a way. It's a, it's a, it's a feed aggregator. That's the way they classify it. So it is, and this is a little screenshot, it's a way to pull all these RSS feeds from any of the websites or the blogs out there and put it into a simple user face. So you see along the left hand side you can see below the ad subscriptions all of the blogs or newspapers or RSS feeds that this person is subscribed to. So we'll go through in the demonstration how to go out there, how to create a Google Reader account. We're going to go out and find some RSS feeds or we're going to subscribe to them. Then we're going to go take a look in Google Reader and see how they look. We'll navigate through Google Reader a little bit so that we get comfortable with moving around in there. And uh, we'll also use the Google Reader search function so that if we're interested in, say, stock options, we can do a quick search. Google Reader has indexed a lot of blogs, a lot of newspaper sources out there that match stock options. So we can take a look at that, quickly subscribe all within the Google Reader interface instead of having to go out and do a Google search first. So they've incorporated the Google search capability within Google Reader for you. So I'll do a quick demonstration right now. So the website to get to it is just google.com slash reader. It'll take you to this main page. And if you don't have a Google account, the great news is, is you don't have to sign up for a Gmail address or anything. If you have a Hotmail account, you can use Google Reader. If you have a Yahoo account, any email address, that's all you need. Just a valid email address and that'll become your username that then you log on to Google Reader with. So in this case, I'm going to click on create account now because I'm going to assume that I don't have one.